Good afternoon, Ricardo Walker, and uh, I would like to um, announce and remind that yes, I'm still going to France. Um, it is my goal at this time to be fully funded by the end of the year um, so that I can relax and not be worried and rushing fundraising to get into the uh, training. There's a training in the fall, which starts actually now, um, and there's a training in the spring and then one in the summer. And the spring one starts on February 2nd, so 2, 9, 11, that's the way I always remember it now. Um, but my goal, um, my uh, true goal is to be at that training and fully funded by that date. Um, if you're at 80 or so, they'll let you come on to the training, um, but my goal is to be fully funded. Um, for those of you who don't really know what I'm talking about, then I'll just break it down real quickly. Um, I ha have been commissioned and appointed as a missionary by um, United World Mission, which is a world sending agency. They are a nonprofit, so all your donations are tax deductible, but they also all go towards the missionary and the project where you um, where you apply them. Um, so that if you give to Team Ricardo, uh, Team France, then it all goes to me. 10% um, goes to me through services because there are people who have to manage uh, all our payroll and um, um, conferences for us because um, we do a country conference countrywide as well as a um, European conference and things like that are covered by that administrative cost so all of the money comes to you just through different services. Or, um, what will I be doing there? Um, I get that question a lot and um, I'm going to assume that if you're watching this you know me and you've seen me involved in our young adult ministry, Refuge, how I kind of just do life alongside um, these young adults and the ulterior motive is to disciple them into disciple makers. That means, and I'm going to break that down simply, to help them fall so, so in love with Jesus that they will help other people do that, to make disciple makers. Um, so we'll be doing that in France. We are uh, formally planting a church there. Um, actually two. I didn't know that there was one in the south as well, but um, the church that I'm hoping I will be a part of is in Brie, um, like the cheese. It's about an hour, 45 minutes outside the southwest corner of Paris, and so there's about 60,000 people there, and that's a big number. Like, I tried to find uh, population statistics for here, and it's like Myrtle Beach and Carolina Forest and Conway together, and we have hundreds of churches in that area. And they have churches, but they're empty. Um, they're used for concerts, they're used for schools, um, meet public meetings, you can rent them as meeting space. But there is no congregation except the one that we've already planted there. Um, which is, th that just boggles my mind. Everyone thinks of France and Europe as the home of Catholicism. So you think that people really know Jesus there already, but I'll tell you, even in the people I met, um, I, if you don't know, I sing a little, and I use that heavily in, in ministry when I'm overseas. Um, I'll usually take my keyboard with me and do some worship songs uh, or old uh, hymns, and these people always call that gospel. No matter what I'm singing, they call it gospel, but for them, it's only R&B sounding music sung by a black person. They have no clue that it's about this supreme plan that God laid out for their salvation. They definitely don't know that it means good news and they don't know the story of Jesus. They've heard God and Jesus in those names but they don't know about him. And so my purpose um, in a nutshell is to go and make the gospel known in France. To do that through small group ministry with families, children's ministry, um, and in one-on-one -on -one discipleship with college-age young adult folks. Now, there's nobody I wouldn't evangelize, um, you know, because your neighbor may not be college-age or the guy who connects with you at the supermarket um, that you see every day may not be in any of those categories. So, obviously, I'm going to make relationships with people um, and evangelize. But if you've ever seen me in, at work at Christ United Methodist, you know that there's a lot of hats I've put on that aren't necessarily my, my best gift, but there's almost nothing I wouldn't do for the church to build her up. 
and I'd like to take the, that same um, principle and apply it in France. Um, here I've served with youth, I've carried chairs, I've helped set up and tear down, I've worked with uh, college age ministry, prayer ministry, um, the care ministry, outreach, um, feeding, feeding the hungry and the homeless, um, almost everything. And at some point I always thought, I want to know how to do all these things because they're all part of the life of a church. And, you know, if I'm ever in a church plant, I want to know how to do those things or what does it look like in ministry? What are the pitfalls? Because um, until you've done some of those things, you don't realize what the pitfalls can be. So anyway, I feel like God's used the last three or four years to really stretch me and, and build training that I couldn't have gotten anywhere else for church planning um, at Christ United Methodist. Um, Christ United Methodist has also endorsed me as a missionary. Um, they have promised to give um, um, an amount once I'm in the field, uh, but mainly that just says I have permission to approach people in the congregation about um, supporting me on a monthly basis or giving one-time gifts. Um, I'll encourage you though, if you're, if you're thinking about giving, if it ever occurs to you, um, the need is for even if you only give a dollar for a monthly gift, for a pledge to say, I'll give this small amount every month um, until God calls all of us home or Ricardo home or calls him back from the mission field, which I anticipate this to be a permanent placement. Um, um, that's kind of what I think he's calling me to. Um, I believe that he's calling me to give decades, not a couple of years, um, which is you know, a fine mission service for some people. Um, I just believe that it takes longer to build into French people, um, to break down the wall, to build a relationship where they trust you, and then they look at your life and they see what's different, and then they realize that it's about God. That difference, the thing that helps you make it through the same trials they have, but with peace and with joy. So um, I want to be there full-time, permanently, as soon as possible. And to do that, United World Mission only measures um, one, um, monthly gifts that are coming in already on a percentage basis. So I have a budget that um, they say that when I get there, it takes 6,000 American dollars. We lose about a third of those on the um, trade, the um, exchange rate. So it's like I'll be living on $4,000 there. Um, even though I'm spending 6000 here. So, um, towards that budget, I've got people already giving towards that budget. And I'm gonna I'm be truthful, I'm about 10%. Um, I was at a higher number, kind of stopped fundraising because I thought I'd found my wife and that didn't work out. Um, we're still friends, it ended well, just not in marriage. Um, that's a successful courtship. I don't like it though. <laughs> um, Anyway, so I'm, I'm back down to about 10%, but I've had lots of folks um, jumping back on board, um, new folks jumping on board just in the last few weeks as I've really um, ramped up my fundraising efforts. So if you're watching this, I'm going to talk to you about it. I'm going to ask you. I'm at least going to give you an opportunity to say no. That's uh, my commitment to the fundraising process, which isn't my favorite because I really, you know, I'm so excited about the disciple making and the evan evangelism that this part is probably the hardest part for me, asking people to get involved. But I really believe that it's something God is doing and that it's more like he's inviting you to get involved in what he's doing. And one way you can do that is to give to this mission. Thank you for watching this video. Um, it's not a singing video. I did let some music play in the background for those of you who love it. Um, and I'd ask you just to every day, um, if, if you can't give financially, I don't want to um, downplay the value of your prayers. There are some folks that aren't giving, but that, or at least aren't giving financially, who are giving in encouragement and prayer daily. And I know that's one of the reasons that I'm, only reasons, one of the only reasons that I'm making any progress, because they believe and they're connected to God and they're praying for this. So I just ask you daily to pray for um, France in general, for them to catch fire with the gospel, and then pray that I would be able to be a part of that work. We pray that people would be led to give to that work. Um, thank you for watching.